Welcome to another Puppet Podcast. Uh, my name is Gary Larizza. I'm a professional services engineer with Puppet. Uh, and today we're going to continue our talk on upgrade and go through the process of actually setting up a Puppet Enterprise 385 machine uh, solely for being able to diff catalogs between the old parser and the new parser. Uh, and on today's episode, we're actually going to talk about getting your code from an existing Puppet Enterprise or Puppet Open Source, um, existing Puppet Master, onto this new diffing machine for the purposes of running and generating the catalogs. Now, if you go to our website, docs.puppet.com slash upgrade, you can see the whole series of steps. This is going to be the first part of step two. There's a whole upgrade code workflow link that if you click on it, will take you to our workflow for updating Puppet code document. Now, going down to prerequisites and then preparation step one, included in this entire step is the process of you must get all of your code onto Puppet 385, the new machine, and you must set up two Puppet environments, one called production and one called future production. Now, if you're using R10K, this process will be a little bit more easier than if you're just, you know, copying code over, moving code over, SCPing it, you know, exploding tarballs, uh, something of the like. If you're using that type of workflow or you have one big monolithic repo, then it's going to be up to you to, when you have this Puppet Enterprise 385 master stood up, go to the Etsy Puppet Labs Puppet Environments directory and set up two folders, one called production and one called future production. Now, these need to have your entire code base, uh, so all your modules, your site.pp, environment.conf, everything necessary to, to have an existing Puppet environment. Uh, they both need to exist. Now, on our first run, when we run the catalog preview tool, they're going to be identical because that's going to be our baseline. But as we make changes and update code for the Puppet 4 parser, you need to be able to basically clone those changes and get them on this machine. Again, if you're SCPing files all over, you're going to have to build a workflow so that your changes get onto this Puppet Enterprise 385 master. If you're using a tool like uh, R10K, this will be much easier. And that's what we're going to look at today. The R10K documentation, there is a link on the left sidebar here that you can review everything. Um, but I'm going to go through it uh, relatively quickly here. Uh, to use R10K, R10K requires a file called r10k.yaml for its configuration. Let me take a look at a sample one here. And you can see I have a lone source called Puppet. The remote is where you would have the um, Git URL for your repository server, typically. The reason I don't have a Git URL is because inside my Vagrant directory, there is a Puppet file. So for the purpose of this demonstration, I have just put that Puppet file and everything I need, including the environment.conf, uh, including the manifests file right here, the hybrid data file, I just put it all into the Vagrant directory. This would be inside your control repo. To take a look at a standard control repo, uh, we can go to Puppet Labs in GitHub, and there is a project called control-repo. This is a sample, this is a template, right? Yours should be a little bit different from that. So I already have my control repo of sorts inside the Vagrant directory, which is why in R10K, I'm pointing just to a local path. Again, this would be a Git URL um, or an HTTP URL to your repository. The baster of Etsy Puppet Labs Puppet Environments is where we're going to create all of the environments. Okay. And if I go back to Vagrant, I can do a git remote and see that, uh, well, that's the wrong directory. There we go. Git remote. Uh, of origin, but actually what I want is git branch. Uh, git branch will show me that I have two branches, one called production, 
So obviously that's going to be all the code as it exists uh, on our other infrastructure. And then the new one called Future Production, that's where all the Puppet 4 changes uh, will be moved into. Like I said before, uh, these are identical as of right now. So when I run R10K, I expect it to create two environments. So again, going back to Etsy, Puppet Labs, Puppet Environments, nothing up my sleeve, there's just one production environment right now. I am going to trigger R10K ad hoc here. And typically if you have R10K set up, you're going to put this R10K.yaml file into the Etsy Puppet Labs R10K directory. And then you can just run R10K deploy environment dash P, which is short for dash dash puppet file, dash V for verbose. Um, because I already have that configuration file in a different directory, I'm using the dash C argument and telling it where to find r10k.yaml. So that would be different for you. I'm also running in debug2 verbosity just to catch any sort of errors. But triggering the r10k, uh, r10k run in this fashion, I expect it to generate both of those folders. You can see right now it's doing the future production environment. And then in a second here, it's going to migrate over to just the production environment and clone those out. After it completes, we'll have our two separate environments that will let us start the next round of the workflow. Um, one final step, once this completes, is that we need to tweak one bit of the environment so that we can turn on the Puppet 4.x parser. Uh, this is a, a change to environment.conf, and we're going to see that right now. In the end, after R10K run, uh, R10K had run, I have the production environment and future production. And both of them have an environment.conf file. So if I open this up, um, there is room in here to set an attribute called parser and configure that to be future in the future production environment. Uh, it was future because back then in 3.8.5, the future was the 4.x parser. That's the difference here. If I look at production environment.conf, I'm going to have that turned off. This effect is effectively gives us one environment with the 3.x parser, one environment with the 4.x parser. So this is all the staging that we need right now in this step here, up at the top of preparing your code. Okay, steps, create your working branch, enable the future parser. In the next video, we're going to go through the tooling. Uh, we're going to set up the catalog preview module, install it, and then start to look at the process of what this report generation would look like. So join us again for that video. Welcome to another Puppet podcast. My name is Gary Larizza. I'm a professional services engineer with Puppet. Uh, and today, in our talk on upgrade, we're going to talk about the process of setting up uh, the Puppet catalog preview module so that we can compile catalogs in both the old Puppet 3.x parser and the new Puppet 4.x parser. If you go to our docs site, docs.puppet.com slash upgrade, you'll see the documentation devoted to upgrading. And you'll see that we have four steps over here on the sidebar. Now in the previous video we reviewed classification uh, and we started down the process of going through the upgrade code workflow. When we went through that workflow we set up two separate puppet environments, production, future production, and we had production using the 3.x parser and future production using the 4.x parser. At this point in time, we're ready to go ahead and install the catalog preview module from the Forge, and we're going to install it directly into the module path of base module path that's shared by uh, every environment. That way, both production and future production can find it. When that installs, and I'm just copying directly from the docs here, uh, the next step that we need to do is they get a list of all the current active nodes that are out there in your infrastructure because this catalog preview module uh, will automate the task of generating the old and new catalog and then diffing them. But you need to give it a list of nodes so it nodes, knows how many times and for what nodes we want to do this to, right? 
Now getting a list of all your active nodes, there's a couple of ways to do it. If you have an existing PuppetDB infrastructure, you can just query PuppetDB directly to get the list of active nodes. Uh, one of the easiest ways is through a module uh, made by Eric Dallin uh, called PuppetDB Query. Uh, and inside here, you can just run the Puppet Query subcommand to give a query for PuppetDB based on you know something. In this case, we were looking at facts of his PE. Uh, and then you can just redirect that out to a file called nodes.txt. This query needs to be done directly on the PuppetDB machine to simplify things. Because we don't have a PuppetDB machine with good data inside it right now, we're going to fall over to the next step. The next step, if you don't have PuppetDB, is to query a directory on the uh, Puppet Master that's in what's called the YAMLDIR. If you run the puppet config print option with YAMLDIR, we're going to see that it ends up being var adlib pe puppet yaml, right? And then we can take a look at var adlib pe puppet yaml and see that we have two directories, one called fax and one called node. In the node directory, you will have a list or you will have a uh, file, a YAML file, for every single one of your nodes that has checked in. And in the fax directory, same thing, a YAML file, but inside here you have a list of all the last fax for every node when they ran. Okay. We have staged and copied these YAML files from an existing infrastructure. We've sanitized the data so that we have a good amount of representative data so that when we do this catalog report, um, it will actually look like something you will likely see. If you're doing this in your infrastructure, you'll run these commands. These will get the list of uh, nodes, and you'll redirect it to a file called nodes.txt. If I look here, I have a file called uh, all nodes.txt that is just that. Uh, it's new line separated and you can see I have a large number of nodes that we're going to test on. Now the number of nodes you add to this list directly affects how long this catalog preview tool is going to take. Okay, So a couple of nodes, a couple of minutes, large number of nodes obviously that will be much larger. Uh, we went through the process of copying from our old machine to the new all of the fax files over. Um, we've already SCP'd that. You can see they exist in var op lib pe puppet yaml. So you'll need to do that step. Now one last step on this puppet 385 machine is to open the file called routes.yaml. So Etsy Puppet Labs puppet routes.yaml. This tells your Puppet Master server, um, well, which what are called terminuses or termini to use for certain tasks. In this case, when you build a catalog, you need to get a list of the current facts about the node so that things like when you're using a file resource and you're using a template, for example, the current facts will directly affect what those files look like. Uh, by default, this is probably going to use PuppetDB, depending on the version that you have, or you might not even have this file. We want to create this file so that we can tell the Puppet Master server to use the YAML directory for all the fact data. This accomplishes a couple of things. When we batch run this catalog diff tool, instead of going to PuppetDB and you know getting the current list of facts, we can just tell it to use these cached facts because in reality, we're just wanting to diff catalogs there. There just needs to be a value. So it's faster. Um, a lot of times for us in the PS team, we just have access to the YAML directory. We don't want to poke around in PuppetDB to see some other data um, that might not be available to us. So if you make a change and you edit this routes.yaml file, make sure to set terminus to YAML. Uh, cache can be YAML too. It should be there by default. And if you make a change to this file, which I didn't because it already existed, but if you did, you will need to restart the PE Puppet Server service. If you're using RHEL 4, that's system CTL. Uh, older versions, you just say service p puppet server restart to do that. But you must restart puppet server if you change that file. Okay. Next, uh, we can go through the process of setting up what's called the preview report generator. 
the output of this catalog preview tool is just JSON, which is pretty difficult to read through and parse if you're not a computer. So we've generated uh, a project that will go through that JSON document, will mark it up as HTML, and it'll be a lot easier for you to read. We're going to go ahead and clone that project into just the home directory in this case. Uh, it doesn't have a directory here, but we're going to refer to it later, so I'm putting it into the home directory. When I do the git clone, uh, first make sure you have git installed, but it's going to clone from the Puppet Lab's public namespace. Um, it says in here in the docs right now that it's on the forge, but it is not on the forge currently. Uh, this command is 100% correct. After you've done that, there's one Ruby gem that we need to do the markup. It's called Markaby, and we're going to use opt puppet bin gem to install it in Puppet Enterprise's vendored uh, Ruby path, right? So we don't stomp on any system Ruby gems you might have out there. With that project cloned and with the gem installed, we can now go through and look at actually running the catalog preview tool. Now the catalog preview tool command is up here and you'll see uh, it accepts a couple of flags. The baseline environment is going to be just the base production 3.x environment you have running right out there today. Okay? The preview environment is the one that will have the future parser turned on. The future parser being the 4.x parser, but in the code it says parser equal future. Okay, so that's going to be future production for us. We staged these two in the previous video. Uh, so if this is unfamiliar with you, go back and look at the setup environments video. Uh, the migration strategy is going from 3.8 uh, to 4. Uh, that can be left the same. And then this nodes argument needs to be passed the text file that we generated in the previous step, whether from PuppetDB, whether from the YAML directory, whatever. So. I am going to copy from my vagrant directory the all nodes.txt file into a file called nodes.txt. Because again, that's what we're looking for here in this command. Finally, we're going to say that we want an overview view in JSON, and we're going to tee it up into a file called catalog preview overview baseline.json. I have a large number of hosts, so this command is going to take a little while, um, and that's where we'll cut off the video. But for you, depends on how many nodes you have. Before we run the command, though, I do want to show you that you do have the ability to exclude resources from a catalog preview. If you go through the preview and you see some resources like our built-in Puppet Enterprise classes have some differences between 3.x and our newer versions, so you'll see a couple of things flagged there. Um, you can put those down. Uh, do read the document here. Uh, and especially the note about ignoring class resources and what that has, what ramifications are there. Okay, uh, I'm not going to do any excludes because we're just going to do the whole report. But the last step here is going to be running the puppet preview command. So when I trigger this command, you'll see errors, you'll possibly see warnings pop up. These warnings in red are to be expected. Uh, that's fine. As long as the command doesn't fail, just leave it running. Uh, the end result will be a giant JSON blob on your screen and then that file that we have teed up. So join us for the next video after this runs and then we'll talk about using the uh, HTML report preview that we've done uh, with our professional services team, reading through the document, uh, and then the upgrade workflow. Hi, welcome again to another Puppet podcast. My name is Gary Larissa. I'm a professional services engineer with Puppet. Uh, and today we're talking upgrade. Um, in previous videos, we walked through the separate steps that we have on our docs site, docs.puppet.com slash upgrade. And we talked about preparing classification, um, preparing your code on the environments, running the actual um, catalog preview tool to diff between them. And in the end of the last video, we had gotten the tool running, but we're waiting for it to complete. Uh, that tool has completed now, so we can take a look. And we see we have a file called catalog preview overview baseline.json. Uh, we take a look at that. 
you can see it is a giant JSON blob with a lot of things going on in it. Um, it's a little bit hard to human parse, so we have, in a previous step, cloned down this Pro Service Preview Report tool. If we go into that directory, we can see that there's a script called Preview Report whose sole job it is um, to accept one of these JSON outputs and then to parse it in a better way. We have HTML there. And that's what we're going to run today. If we go to the upgrade code workflow doc, previously we stopped at running a catalog preview, uh, we're going to move down to generate a report. Uh, and what it wants us to do is change into that directory like we have done, and then run this, catalog, or this preview report script. Now the preview report script wants to create a file in an output directory. And we're going to put it in var www catalog preview, uh, but it doesn't actually create that directory for us. I'm going to do that very quick. Uh, catalog preview. And then run the preview report script. Does not take as long as uh, the catalog diff module does, um, but will take a, a certain amount of time to generate the HTML document. Now in the end, that HTML document is ready. It's able to be served up. If you've got Apache or Nginx or whatever, just go ahead and serve up a directory with that file. Um, it needs to be served up on this same machine because it references code that's in the code base. Um, we don't have either Apache or uh, Nginx set up. And so I actually have a quick Ruby one-liner that can use Puppet's built-in Ruby installation to just run a quick web server on a certain port. Right. I'm going to change to that directory and run this command. It's going to serve up on port 8000, just the, a web server for this directory. I'm going to copy my IP address of my Vagrant instance here. I'm going to go, and I'm going to cl click on Catalog Preview and Overview Baseline. There is our output report. And you can see we have a couple of headings. You can view the top 10 nodes with known issues, right? And then view individually line by line, uh, empty string true, ambiguous integer. These are a lot of unquoted modes, which we'll see in a second. You can break down the individual known issues. You can see one of the most popular issues is not quoting the mode. So instead of it being octal, it ends up being decimal. Uh, that was a big thing from Puppet 3 to Puppet 4. Uh, and then as we scroll down, we can see other issues. Um, empty string true. There's an individual empty string here. And it'll show you the individual lines that will pop up here. Uh, you can even go and see the resource breakdown for all user resources. You know, what's the issue that we had? Moving on to the next defined uh, resource type, accounts virtual. So resource only view. Uh, you can even go node breakdown. So on a per node basis, uh, you can see what did everything look at? It'll give you the last compilation tool, the, the puppet preview tool, uh, the version number, everything like that. But this is your baseline to go from. This is where you start doing your work. Um, we have on the Puppet Master server those two environments. I'm going to stop serving this page for a second. We can see Etsy, uh, Puppet Labs, Puppet environments. One called future production and one called production. If you're using the R10K workflow, your changes would be dropped into the future production branch, and then you can just run this script again, over and over and over again. Hopefully and ideally that list shrinks and shrinks until you're pretty confident about what happens. Um, now this is not going to catch 100% everything with our uh, with the 3.x.4.x move. There's other certain things, for example, um, using uh, if you had a defined resource type called application. In Puppet 4, we use that as a reserve word for the language for our application orchestration. Uh, some other meta parameters. These are things that the catalog preview tool won't actually catch. Uh, and so you can run in no op mode. Um, that can be a first thing that you do is actually target your nodes over to this infrastructure. Uh, so you'll begin work on the code here. Actually porting nodes over uh, is going to be the next step. And in the next video, as we've gone through steps 
one and two, preparing your code being the whole of two, uh, the next step would be upgrading your servers. So we're going to be migrating over, um, cutting over from our existing infrastructure to newly stood up infrastructure running 2016.2 on Puppet Enterprise. So here we'll talk about certificates, CAs moving so that your nodes can just really quickly target a new master, they don't have to generate new certs, and everything will work. Uh, the last video will then we'll talk about upgrading the agents. So tune in for the next video.